Hey Alpha Nurses, I'm Nurse Sandra from alphanurseguide.com. This is NCLEX R Review Lesson 12, 52 Pharmacology Questions. You can get my notes on Etsy. Be sure to follow my store to get any updates of new notes. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for more content. All links are in the description. Without the way, let's get started. The nurse is teaching a client how to mix regular insulin and NPH insulin in the same syringe. Which action, if performed by the client, indicates the need for further teaching? A. Withdraws the NPH insulin first. B. Withdraws the regular insulin first. C. Injects air into NPH insulin vial first. D. Injects an amount of air equal to the desired dose of insulin into each vial. The correct answer is A. Withdraws the NPH insulin first. Rationale, when preparing a mixture of short-acting insulin, such as regular insulin, with another insulin preparation, the short-acting insulin is drawn into the syringe first. This sequence will avoid contaminating the vial of short-acting insulin with insulin of another type. Options B, C, and D identify correct actions for preparing NPH and short-acting insulin. The home care nurse visits a client who recently got diagnosed with diabetes mellitus, who is taking Humulin NPH insulin daily. The client asks the nurse how to store the unopened vials of insulin. The nurse should tell the client to take which action. A. Freeze the insulin. B. Refrigerate the insulin. C. Store the insulin in a dark, dry place. D. Keep the insulin at room temperature. The correct answer is B. Refrigerate the insulin. Rationale, insulin in unopened vials should be stored under refrigeration until needed. Vials should not be frozen. When stored unopened under refrigeration, insulin can be used up to the expiration date on the vial. Glymperide is prescribed for a client with diabetes mellitus. The nurse instructs the client that which food items are most acceptable to consume, while taking this medication. Select all that apply. A. Alcohol. B. Red meats. C. Whole grain cereals. D. Low calorie desserts. The correct answers are B. Red meats and C. Whole grain cereals. Rationale When alcohol is combined with glymperide, a disulfiram like reaction may occur. This syndrome includes flushing, palpitations, and nausea. Alcohol can also potentiate the hypoglycemic effects of the medication. Clients need to be instructed to avoid alcohol consumption while taking this medication. Low-calorie desserts should also be avoided. Even though the calorie content may be low, carbohydrate content is most likely high and can affect the blood glucose. The nurse is providing discharge teaching for a client, newly diagnosed with type 2 diabetes mellitus, who has been prescribed metformin. Which client statement indicates the need for further teaching? A. It is okay if I skip meals now and then. B. I need to constantly watch for signs of low blood sugar. C. I need to let my health care provider know if I get unusually tired. D. I will be sure to not drink alcohol while on this medication. The correct answer is B, I need to constantly watch for signs of low blood sugar. Rationale, metformin is classified as a biguanide and is the most commonly used medication for type 2 diabetes mellitus initially. It is also often used as a preventive medication for those at high risk for developing diabetes mellitus. When used alone, metformin lowers the blood sugar after meal intake as well as fasting blood glucose levels. Metformin does not stimulate insulin release and therefore poses little risk for hypoglycemia. For this reason, metformin is well suited for clients who skip meals. Unusual somnolence, as well as hyperventilation, myalgia, and malaise are early signs of lactic acidosis, a toxic effect associated with metformin. If any of these signs or symptoms occur, the client should inform the health care provider immediately. The health care provider prescribes exonatide, 
for a client with type 1 diabetes mellitus who takes insulin. The nurse should plan to take which most appropriate intervention. A. Withhold the medication and call the HCP, questioning the prescription for the client. B. Administer the medication within 60 minutes before the morning and evening meal. C. Monitor the client for gastrointestinal side effects after administering the medication. D. Withdraw the insulin from the prefilled pen into an insulin syringe to prepare for administration. The correct answer is A. Withhold the medication and call the HCP, questioning the prescription for the client. Rationale, exonatide, is an incretin mimetic used for type 2 diabetes mellitus only. It is not recommended for clients taking insulin. Hence, the nurse should withhold the medication and question the HCP regarding this prescription. Although options B and C are correct statements about the medication, in this situation the medication should not be administered. The medication is packaged in pre-filled pens, ready for injection, without the need for drawing it up into another syringe. A client is taking Humulin NPH insulin and regular insulin every morning. The nurse should provide which instructions to the client. Select all that apply. A. Hypoglycemia may be experienced before dinner time. B. The insulin dose should be decreased if illness occurs. C. The insulin should be administered at room temperature. D. Withdraw the insulin from the prefilled pen into an insulin syringe to prepare for administration. F. The insulin vial needs to be shaken vigorously to break up the precipitates. E. The NPH insulin should be drawn into the syringe first, then the regular insulin. The correct answers are A. Hypoglycemia may be experienced before dinner time, and C. The insulin should be administered at room temperature. Rationale Humulin NPH is an intermediate acting insulin. The onset of action is 60 to 120 minutes, it peaks in 6 to 14 hours, and its duration of action is 16 to 24 hours. Regular insulin is a short acting insulin. Depending on the type, the onset of action is 30 to 60 minutes, it peaks in 1 to 5 hours, and its duration is 6 to 10 hours. Hypoglycemic reactions most likely occur during peak time. Insulin should be at room temperature when administered. Clients may need their insulin dosages increased during times of illness. Insulin vials should never be shaken vigorously. Regular insulin is always drawn up before NPH. The home health care nurse is visiting a client who was recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes mellitus. The client is prescribed repaglinide and metformin. The nurse should provide which instructions to the client. Select all that apply. A. Diarrhea may occur secondary to the metformin. B. The repaglinide is not taken if a meal is skipped. C. The repaglinide is taken 30 minutes before eating. D. A simple sugar food item is carried and used to treat mild hypoglycemia episodes. F. Muscle pain is an expected effect of metformin and may be treated with acetaminophen. E. Metformin increases hepatic glucose production to prevent hypoglycemia associated with repaglinide. The correct answers are A. Diarrhea may occur secondary to the metformin B. The repaglinide is not taken if a meal is skipped, C. The repaglinide is taken 30 minutes before eating, and D. A simple sugar food item is carried and used to treat mild hypoglycemia episodes. Rationale, repaglinide, a rapid-acting oral hypoglycemic agent that stimulates pancreatic insulin secretion, should be taken before meals and should be withheld if the client does not eat. Hypoglycemia is a side effect of repaglinide, and the client should always be prepared by carrying a simple sugar at all times. Metformin is an oral hypoglycemic, given in combination with repaglinide, and works by decreasing hepatic glucose production. A common side effect of metformin is diarrhea. Muscle pain may occur as an adverse effect from metformin, but it might signify a more serious condition that warrants healthcare provider notification, not the use of acetaminophen. The nurse is teaching the client about his prescribed prednisone. 
which statement, if made by the client, indicates that further teaching is necessary. A. I can take aspirin, or my antihistamine, if I need it. B. I need to take the medication every day, at the same time. C. I need to avoid coffee, tea, cola, and chocolate in my diet. D. If I gain more than 5 pounds a week, I will call my health care provider. The correct answer is, A. I can take aspirin, or my antihistamine, if I need it. Rationale, aspirin, and other over-the-counter medications, should not be taken, unless the client consults with the HCP. The client needs to take the medication, at the same time every day, and should be instructed not to stop the medication. A slight weight gain, as a result of an improved appetite is expected, however, after the dosage is stabilized, a weight gain of 5 pounds, or more weekly, should be reported to the HCP. Caffeine-containing foods and fluids need to be avoided because they may contribute to steroid ulcer development. Carbidopa levodopa is prescribed for a client with Parkinson's disease. The nurse monitors the client for side and adverse effects of the medication, which finding indicates that the client is experiencing an adverse effect. A. Pruritus B. Tachycardia C. Hypertension D. Impaired voluntary movements The correct answer is D. Impaired voluntary movements. Rationale, dyskinesia, and impaired voluntary movements may occur with high carbidopa-levodopa dosages. Nausea, anorexia, dizziness, orthostatic hypotension, bradycardia, and akinesia are frequent side effects of the medication. The home health nurse visits a client who is taking phenytoin for control of seizures. During the assessment, the nurse notes that the client is taking birth control pills. Which information should the nurse include in the teaching plan? A. Pregnancy must be avoided while taking phenytoin. B. The client may stop the medication if it is causing severe gastrointestinal effects. C. There is the potential of decreased effectiveness of birth control pills while taking phenytoin. D. There is the increased risk of thrombophlebitis while taking phenytoin and birth control pills together. The correct answer is C. There is the potential of decreased effectiveness of birth control pills while taking phenytoin. Rationale, phenytoin enhances the rate of estrogen metabolism, which can decrease the effectiveness of some birth control pills. Pregnancy does not need to be avoided while taking phenytoin, however, because phenytoin may cause some risk to the fetus, consultation with the healthcare provider should be done if pregnancy is considered. Telling a client that there is an increased risk of thrombophlebitis is incorrect and inappropriate and could cause anxiety in the client. A client should not be instructed to stop anti-seizure medication. The nurse is caring for a client in the emergency department who has been diagnosed with Bell's palsy. The client has been taking acetaminophen and acetaminophen overdose is suspected. Which antidote should the nurse prepare for administration if prescribed? A. Pentostatin B. Oranofin C. Fludarabine D. Acetylcysteine The correct answer is D. Acetylcysteine. Rationale, the antidote for acetaminophen is acetylcysteine. The normal therapeutic serum level of acetaminophen is 10 to 20 micrograms per milliliters. A toxic level is higher than 50 micrograms per milliliters, and levels higher than 100 micrograms per milliliters could indicate hepatotoxicity. Oranofin is a gold preparation that may be used to treat rheumatoid arthritis. Pentostatin and fludarabine are antineoplastic agents. Meperidine has been prescribed for a client to treat pain. Which side and adverse effects should the nurse monitor for? Select all that apply. A. Diarrhea. B. Tremors. C. Drowsiness. D. Hypotension. E. Urinary frequency. F. Increased respiratory rate. The correct answers are B, tremors, C, drowsiness, and D, hypotension. Rationale, 
Meperidine is an opioid analgesic. Side and adverse effects include respiratory depression, drowsiness, hypotension, constipation, urinary retention, nausea, vomiting, and tremors. A client is taking the prescribed dose of phenytoin to control seizures. Results of a phenytoin blood level study reveal a level of 35 micrograms per milliliters, which finding would be expected as a result of this laboratory result. A. Hypotension. B. Tachycardia. C. Slurred speech. D. No abnormal finding. The correct answer is C. Slurred speech. Rationale, the therapeutic phenytoin level is 10 to 20 micrograms per milliliters. At a level higher than 20 micrograms per milliliters, involuntary movements of the eyeballs can occur. At a level higher than 30 micrograms per milliliters, ataxia and slurred speech can occur. The client arrives at the emergency department, complaining of back spasms. The client states, I have been taking 2 to 3 aspirin every 4 hours for the last week, and it hasn't helped my back. Since acetylsalicylic acid intoxication is suspected, the nurse should assess the client for which manifestation. A. Tinnitus. B. Diarrhea. C. Constipation. D. Photosensitivity. The correct answer is A. Tinnitus. Rationale, mild intoxication with acetylsalicylic acid is called salicylism and is experienced commonly when the daily dosage is higher than 4 grams. Tinnitus is the most frequent effect noted with intoxication. Hyperventilation may occur because salicylate stimulates the respiratory center. Fever may occur because salicylate interferes with the metabolic pathways, coupling oxygen consumption and heat production. A client with trigeminal neuralgia is being treated with carbamazepine, 400 mg orally daily which value indicates that the client is experiencing an adverse effect to the medication. A. Sodium level, 140 milliequivalents per liter. B. Uric acid level, 4.0 mg per deciliter. C. White blood cell count, 3,000 cubic millimeter. D. Blood urea nitrogen level, 10 mg per deciliter. The correct answer is C, white blood cell count, 3,000 cubic millimeter. Rationale, adverse effects of carbamazepine appear as blood dyscrasias, including aplastic anemia, agranulocytosis, thrombocytopenia, and leukopenia, cardiovascular disturbances, including thrombophlebitis and dysrhythmias, and dermatological effects. The low white blood cell count reflects agranulocytosis. The laboratory values in options A, B, and D are normal values. The nurse is caring for a client with chronic back pain. Codeine has been prescribed for the client. Specific to this medication, which intervention should the nurse include in the plan of care while the client is taking this medication? A. Monitor radial pulse. B. Monitor bowel activity. C. Monitor apical heart rate. D. Monitor peripheral pulses. The correct answer is B. Monitor bowel activity. Rationale, while the client is taking codeine, the nurse would monitor vital signs and assess for hypertension. The nurse also should increase fluid intake, palpate the bladder for urinary retention, auscultate bowel sounds, and monitor the pattern of daily bowel activity and stool consistency because the medication causes constipation. The nurse should monitor respiratory status and initiate deep breathing and coughing exercises. In addition, the nurse monitors the effectiveness of the pain medication. A client admitted to the hospital with chest pain and a history of type 2 diabetes mellitus is scheduled for cardiac catheterization, which medication would need to be withheld for 24 hours before the procedure and for 48 hours after the procedure. A. Glipizide B. Metformin C. Ripaglinide D. Regular insulin. The correct answer is B. Metformin. Rationale, 
Metformin needs to be withheld 24 hours before and for 48 hours after cardiac catheterization because of the injection of contrast medium during the procedure. If the contrast medium affects kidney function with metformin in the system, the client would be at increased risk for lactic acidosis. The medications in the remaining options do not need to be withheld 24 hours before and 48 hours after cardiac catheterization. The nurse is caring for a client who takes ibuprofen for pain. The nurse is gathering information on the client's medication history and determines it is necessary to contact the healthcare provider if the client is also taking which medications that are contraindicated for use with ibuprofen. Select all that apply. A. Warfarin. B. Glymperide. C. Amlodipine. D. Simvastatin. E. Hydrochlorothiazide. The correct answers are A. Warfarin, B. Glymperide, and C. Amlodipine. Rationale Nonsteroidal anti inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen can amplify the effects of anticoagulants such as warfarin, therefore, these medications should not be taken together. Hypoglycemia may result for the client taking ibuprofen. If the client is concurrently taking an oral hypoglycemic agent, such as glymperide, these medications should not be combined. A high risk of toxicity exists if the client is taking ibuprofen concurrently with a calcium channel blocker such as amlodipine, therefore, this combination is contraindicated. Zephyrolucist is prescribed for a client with bronchial asthma. Which laboratory test does the nurse expect to be prescribed? before the administration of this medication. A. Platelet count. B. Neutrophil count. C. Liver function tests. D. Complete blood count. The correct answer is C. Liver function tests. Rationale, Zephyrolucist is a leukotriene receptor antagonist used in the prophylaxis and long-term treatment of bronchial asthma. Zephyrolucist is used with caution in clients with impaired hepatic function. Liver function laboratory tests should be performed to obtain a baseline and the levels should be monitored during administration of the medication. It is not necessary to perform the other laboratory tests before administration of the medication. Terbutaline is prescribed for a client with bronchitis. The nurse checks the client's medical history for which disorder in which the medication should be used with caution. A. Osteoarthritis. B. Hypothyroidism. C. Diabetes mellitus. D. Polycystic disease. The correct answer is C. Diabetes mellitus. Rationale Terbutaline is a bronchodilator and is contraindicated in clients with hypersensitivity to sympathomimetics. It should be used with caution in clients with impaired cardiac function, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, hyperthyroidism, or a history of seizures. The medication may increase blood glucose levels. A chromalin sodium inhaler is prescribed for a client with allergic asthma. The nurse provides instructions regarding the adverse effects of this medication and should tell the client that which undesirable effect is associated with this medication. A. Insomnia. B. Constipation. C. Hypotension. D. Bronchospasm. The correct answer is D. Bronchospasm. Rationale Chromalin sodium is an inhaled non steroidal anti allergy agent and a mast cell stabilizer. Undesirable effects associated with inhalation therapy of chromalin sodium are bronchospasm, cough, nasal congestion, throat irritation, and wheezing. Clients receiving this medication orally may experience pruritus, nausea, diarrhea, and myalgia. The nurse teaches a client about the effects of diphenhydramine, which has been prescribed as a cough suppressant. The nurse determines that the client needs further instruction if the client makes which statement. A. I will take the medication on an empty stomach. B. I won't drink alcohol while taking this medication. C. I won't do activities that require mental alertness while taking this medication. 
D. I will use sugarless gum, candy, or oral rinses to decrease dryness in my mouth. The correct answer is A. I will take the medication on an empty stomach. Rationale Diphenhydramine has several uses, including as an antihistamine, antitussive, antidiskinetic, and sedative hypnotic. Instructions for use include taking with food or milk to decrease gastrointestinal upset and using oral rinses sugarless gum, or hard candy to minimize dry mouth. Because the medication causes drowsiness, the client should avoid use of alcohol or central nervous system depressants, operating a car, or engaging in other activities requiring mental awareness during use. The nurse is preparing to administer a dose of naloxone intravenously to a client with an opioid overdose. Which supportive medical equipment should the nurse plan to have at the client's bedside if needed? A. Nasogastric tube B. Paracentesis tray C. Resuscitation equipment D. Central line insertion tray The correct answer is C. Resuscitation equipment Rationale The nurse administering naloxone for suspected opioid overdose should have resuscitation equipment readily available to support naloxone therapy if it is needed. Other adjuncts that may be needed include oxygen, a mechanical ventilator, and vasopressors. A client has a prescription to take guaifenesin. The nurse determines that the client understands the proper administration of this medication if the client states that he or she will perform which action. A. Take an extra dose if fever develops. B. Take the medication with meals only. C. Take the tablet with a full glass of water. D. Decrease the amount of daily fluid intake. The correct answer is C. Take the tablet with a full glass of water. Rationale Wifenicin is an expectorant and should be taken with a full glass of water to decrease the viscosity of secretions. Extra doses should not be taken. The client should contact the healthcare provider if the cough lasts longer than one week or is accompanied by fever, rash, sore throat, or persistent headache. Fluids are needed to decrease the viscosity of secretions. The medication does not have to be taken with meals. A client has been taking isoniazid for two months. The client complains to the nurse about numbness, paresthesias, and tingling in the extremities. The nurse interprets that the client is experiencing which problem? A. Hypercalcemia B. Peripheral neuritis C. Small blood vessel spasm D. Impaired peripheral circulation The correct answer is B. Peripheral neuritis Rationale Isoniazid is an anti-tubercular medication. A common side effect of isoniazid is peripheral neuritis, manifested by numbness, tingling, and paresthesias in the extremities. This can be minimized with pyridoxine intake. Options A, C, and D are not associated with the information in the question. A client is to begin a six-month course of therapy with isoniazid. The nurse should plan to teach the client to take which action? A. Use alcohol in small amounts only. B. Report yellow eyes or skin immediately. C. Increase intake of Swiss or aged cheeses. D. Avoid vitamin supplements during therapy. The correct answer is B. Report yellow eyes or skin immediately. Rationale Isoniazid is hepatotoxic and therefore the client is taught to report signs and symptoms of hepatitis immediately. The client should avoid intake of Swiss cheese, fish such as tuna, and foods containing tyramine, because they may cause a reaction characterized by redness and itching of the skin, flushing, sweating, tachycardia, headache or lightheadedness. The client can avoid developing peripheral neuritis by increasing the intake of pyridoxine during the course of isoniazid therapy. A client's medication sheet contains a prescription for sertraline. To ensure safe administration of the medication, how should the nurse administer the dose? A. On an empty stomach. B. At the same time each evening. 
C. Evenly spaced around the clock. D. As needed, when the client complains of depression. The correct answer is B. At the same time each evening. Rationale. Sertraline is classified as an antidepressant. Sertraline generally is administered once every 24 hours. It may be administered in the morning or evening, but evening administration may be preferable because drowsiness is a side effect. The medication may be administered without food or with food if gastrointestinal distress occurs. Sertraline is not prescribed for use as needed. A client with schizophrenia has been started on medication therapy with clozapine. The nurse should assess the results of which laboratory study to monitor for adverse effects from this medication. A. Platelet count. B. Blood glucose level. C. Liver function studies. D. White blood cell count. The correct answer is D. White blood cell count. Rationale. A client taking clozapine may experience agranulocytosis, which is monitored by reviewing the results of the white blood cell count. Treatment is interrupted if the white blood cell count decreases to less than 3,000 cubic millimeter. Agranulocytosis could be fatal if undetected and untreated. The other laboratory studies are not related specifically to the use of this medication. A client is scheduled for discharge and will be taking phenobarbital for an extended period. The nurse would place highest priority on teaching the client which point that directly relates to client safety. A. Take the medication only with meals. B. Take the medication at the same time each day. C. Use a dose container to help prevent missed doses. D. Avoid drinking alcohol while taking this medication. The correct answer is D. Avoid drinking alcohol while taking this medication. Rationale, phenobarbital is an anticonvulsant and hypnotic agent. The client should avoid taking any other central nervous system depressants, such as alcohol, while taking this medication. The medication may be given without regard to meals. Taking the medication at the same time each day enhances compliance and maintains more stable blood levels of the medication. Using a dose container or pillbox may be helpful for some clients. The nurse is describing the medication side and adverse effects to a client who is taking oxazepam. Which information should the nurse incorporate in the discussion? A. Consume a low-fiber diet. B. Increase fluids and bulk in the diet. C. Rest if the heart begins to beat rapidly. D. Take antidiarrheal agents if diarrhea occurs. The correct answer is B. Increase fluids and bulk in the diet. Rationale. Oxazepam causes constipation, and the client is instructed to increase fluid intake and bulk in the diet. If the heart begins to beat fast, the healthcare provider is notified because this could indicate overdose. In addition, diarrhea could indicate an incomplete intestinal obstruction, and if this occurs, the HCP is notified. The nurse is administering risperidone to a client who is scheduled to be discharged. Before discharge, which instruction should the nurse provide to the client? A. Get adequate sunlight. B. Continue driving as usual. C. Avoid foods rich in potassium. D. Get up slowly when changing positions. The correct answer is D. Get up slowly when changing positions. Rationale. Risperidone can cause orthostatic hypotension. Sunlight should be avoided by the client taking this medication. With any psychotropic medication, caution needs to be taken until the individual can determine whether his or her level of alertness is affected. Food interaction is not a concern. A hospitalized client is started on phenylzine for the treatment of depression. The nurse should instruct the client that which foods are acceptable to consume while taking this medication. Select all that apply. A. Figs. B. Yogurt. C. Crackers. 
D. Aged cheese. E. Tossed salad. F. Oatmeal raisin cookies. The correct answer is C. Crackers and E. Tossed salad. Rationale Phenylzine is a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. The client should avoid ingesting foods that are high in tyramine. Ingestion of these foods could trigger a potentially fatal hypertensive crisis. Foods to avoid include yogurt, aged cheeses, smoked or processed meats, red wines, and fruits such as avocados, raisins, or figs. Potassium chloride intravenously is prescribed for a client with hypokalemia. Which actions should the nurse take to plan for preparation and administration of the potassium? Select all that apply. A. Obtain an intravenous infusion pump. B. Monitor urine output during administration. C. Prepare the medication for bolus administration. D. Monitor the IV site for signs of infiltration or phlebitis. E. Ensure that the medication is diluted in the appropriate volume of fluid. F. Ensure that the bag is labeled so that it reads the volume of potassium in the solution. The correct answers are A. Obtain an intravenous infusion pump, B. Monitor urine output during administration, D. Monitor the foresight for signs of infiltration or phlebitis, E. Ensure that the medication is diluted in the appropriate volume of fluid, and F. Ensure that the bag is labeled so that it reads the volume of potassium in the solution. Rationale, potassium chloride administered intravenously must always be diluted in IV fluid and infused via an infusion pump. Potassium chloride is never given by bolus. Giving potassium chloride by IV push can result in cardiac arrest. The nurse should ensure that the potassium is diluted in the appropriate amount of diluent or fluid. The IV bag containing the potassium chloride should always be labeled with the volume of potassium it contains. The IV site is monitored closely because potassium chloride is irritating to the veins and there is risk of phlebitis. In addition, the nurse should monitor for infiltration. The nurse monitors urinary output during administration and contacts the healthcare provider if the urinary output is less than 30 milliliter per hour. A client who has a cold is seen in the emergency department with an inability to void. Because the client has a history of benign prostatic hyperplasia, the nurse determines that the client should be questioned about the use of which medication. A. Diuretics. B. Antibiotics. C. Antilipemics. D. Decongestants. The correct answer is D. Decongestants. Rationale, in the client with benign prostatic hyperplasia, episodes of urinary retention can be triggered by certain medications such as decongestants, anticholinergics, and antidepressants. These medications lessen the voluntary ability to contract the bladder. The client should be questioned about the use of these medications if he has urinary retention. Diuretics increase urine output. Antibiotics and antilipemics do not affect ability to urinate. Nitrofurantoin is prescribed for a client with a urinary tract infection. The client contacts the nurse and reports a cough, chills, fever, and difficulty breathing. The nurse should make which interpretation about the client's complaints. A. The client may have contracted the flu. B. The client is experiencing anaphylaxis. C. The client is experiencing expected effects of the medication. D. The client is experiencing a pulmonary reaction requiring cessation of the medication. The correct answer is D. The client is experiencing a pulmonary reaction requiring cessation of the medication. Rationale, nitrofurantoin can induce two kinds of pulmonary reactions, acute and subacute. Acute reactions, which are most common, manifest with dyspnea, chest pain, chills, fever, cough, and alveolar infiltrates. These symptoms resolve two to four days after discontinuing the medication. Acute pulmonary responses are thought to be hypersensitivity reactions. Subacute reactions are rare and occur during prolonged treatment. Symptoms usually regress over weeks to months following nitrofurantoin withdrawal.
The nurse is providing discharge instructions to a client receiving trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. Which instruction should be included in the list? A. Advise that sunscreen is not needed. B. Drink 8 to 10 glasses of water per day. C. If the urine turns dark brown, call the healthcare provider immediately. D. Decrease the dosage when symptoms are improving to prevent an allergic response. The correct answer is B. Drink 8 to 10 glasses of water per day. Rationale each dose of trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole should be administered with a full glass of water, and the client should maintain a high fluid intake to avoid crystalluria. The medication is more soluble in alkaline urine. The client should not be instructed to taper or discontinue the dose. Clients should be advised to use sunscreen since the skin becomes sensitive to the sun. Some forms of trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole cause urine to turn dark brown or red. This does not indicate the need to notify the HCP. Trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole is prescribed for a client. The nurse should instruct the client to report which symptom if it develops during the course of this medication therapy. A. Nausea. B. Diarrhea. C. Headache. D. Sore throat. The correct answer is D. Sore throat. Rationale, clients taking trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole should be informed about early signs and symptoms of blood disorders that can occur from this medication. These include sore throat, fever, and pallor, and the client should be instructed to notify the healthcare provider if these occur. The other options do not require HCP notification. Phenazopyridine is prescribed for a client with a urinary tract infection. The nurse evaluates that the medication is effective based on which observation. A. Urine is clear amber. B. Urination is not painful. C. Urge incontinence is not present. D. A reddish-orange discoloration of the urine is present. The correct answer is B. Urination is not painful. Rationale, phenazopyridine is a urinary analgesic. It is effective when it eliminates pain and burning with urination. It does not eliminate the bacteria causing the infection, so it would not make the urine clear amber. It does not treat urge incontinence. It will cause the client to have reddish-orange discoloration of urine, but this is a side effect of the medication, not the desired effect. Bethanethyl chloride is prescribed for a client with urinary retention. Which disorder should be a contraindication to the administration of this medication? A. Gastric adenine. B. Urinary strictures. C. Neurogenic adenine. D. Gastroesophageal reflux. The correct answer is B. Urinary strictures. Rationale. Bethanethyl chloride can be harmful to clients with urinary tract obstruction or weakness of the bladder wall. The medication has the ability to contract the bladder and thereby increase pressure within the urinary tract. Elevation of pressure within the urinary tract could rupture the bladder in clients with these conditions. The medication prescribed is hydromorphone hydrochloride, 3 mg intramuscularly, every 4 hours as needed. The medication label reads hydromorphone hydrochloride for milligrams per 1 milliliter. The nurse should prepare to administer how many milliliter to the client. A. 0.70 milliliters. B. 0.50 milliliters. C. 0.75 milliliters. D. 0.80 milliliters. The correct answer is C, 0.75 milliliters. Rationale, the formula for this question is, desired times quantity, over on hand, equals to milliliter per dose. So in this question, desired is 3 milligrams, quantity is 1 milliliter, on hand is 4 milligrams. You plug these numbers into the formula, so 3 milligrams times 1 milliliter, over 4 milligrams, equals to 0.75 milliliters. 
The intravenous prescription is 1,000 milliliters of 0.9% sodium chloride to run over 12 hours. The drop factor is 15 drops per 1 milliliter. The nurse plans to adjust the flow rate to how many drops per minute. Round the answer to the nearest whole number. A. 18 drops per minute. B. 19 drops per minute. C. 20 drops per minute. D. 21 drops per minute. The correct answer is D. 21 drops per minute. Rationale, the prescribed 1000 milliliters is to be infused over 12 hours. Follow the formula and multiply 1000 milliliters by 15. Then divide the result by 720 minutes. The infusion is to run at 20.8 or 21 drops per minute. The medication prescribed is digoxin, 0.25 mg orally, daily. The medication label reads digoxin, 0.125 mg per one tablet. The nurse should prepare how many tablets to administer the dose. A. 1 tablet. B. 2 tablets. C. 3 tablets. D. 4 tablets. The correct answer is B. 2 tablets. Rationale. The formula for this question is desired times quantity over on hand equals to tablets per dose. So in this question, desired is 0.25 mg, quantity is 1 tablet, on hand is 0.125 mg. You plug these numbers into the formula, so 0.25 mg times 1 tablet over 0.125 mg equals to 2 tablets. The medication prescribed is heparin sodium, 650 units subcutaneously, every 12 hours. The medication vial reads heparin sodium, 1000 units per 1 milliliter. The nurse prepares how many milliliters to administer one dose. A. 6.50 milliliters. B. 0.65 milliliters. C. 650 milliliters. D. 6,500 milliliters. The correct answer is B. 0.65 milliliters. Rationale, the formula for this question is desired times quantity over on hand equals to milliliter per dose. So in this question, desired is 650 units, quantity is 1 milliliter, on hand is 1,000 units. You plug these numbers into the formula, so 650 units times 1 milliliter, over 1,000 units, equals to 0.65 milliliters. The intravenous prescription is 3,000 milliliters of 5% dextrose, to run over a 24-hour period. The drop factor is 10 drops per 1 milliliter. The nurse plans to adjust the flow rate, to how many drops per minute. Round the answer to the nearest whole number. A. 19 drops per minute. B. 20 drops per minute. C. 21 drops per minute. D. 22 drops per minute. The correct answer is C. 21 drops per minute. Rationale, the prescribed 3000 milliliters is to be infused over 24 hours. Follow the formula and multiply 3000 milliliters by 10. Then divide the result by 1440 minutes. The infusion is to run at 20.8 or 21 drops per minute. A client has been on treatment for rheumatoid arthritis for three weeks. During the administration of a tannercept, which is most important for the nurse to assess. A. The injection site for itching and edema. B. The white blood cell counts and platelet counts. C. Whether the client is experiencing fatigue and joint pain. D. Whether the client is experiencing a metallic taste in the mouth and a loss of appetite. The correct answer is B. The white blood cell counts and platelet counts. Rationale, infection, and pancytopenia are adverse effects of a tannercept. Laboratory studies are performed prior to and during medication treatment. The appearance of abnormal white blood cell counts 
and abnormal platelet counts can alert the nurse to a potentially life-threatening infection. Injection site itching is a common occurrence following administration. A metallic taste and loss of appetite are not common signs of adverse effects of this medication. Allopurinol is prescribed for a client and the nurse provides medication instructions to the client. Which instruction should the nurse provide? A. Drink 3,000 milliliters of fluid daily. B. Take the medication on an empty stomach. C. The effect of the medication will occur immediately. D. Any swelling of the lips is a normal expected response. The correct answer is A. Drink 3,000 milliliters of fluid daily. Rationale Clients taking allopurinol are encouraged to drink 3,000 milliliters of fluid a day unless otherwise contraindicated. A full therapeutic effect may take one week or longer. Allopurinol is to be given with or immediately after meals or milk. A client who develops a rash, irritation of the eyes, or swelling of the lips or mouth should contact the healthcare provider because this may indicate hypersensitivity. Colchicine is prescribed for a client with a diagnosis of gout. The nurse reviews the client's record, knowing that this medication would be used with caution in which disorder. A. Myxedema. B. Kidney disease. C. Hypothyroidism. D. Diabetes mellitus. The correct answer is B. Kidney disease. Rationale. Colchicine is used with caution in older clients, debilitated clients, and clients with cardiac, kidney, or gastrointestinal disease. Alandronate is prescribed for a client with osteoporosis, and the nurse is providing instructions on administration of the medication. Which instruction should the nurse provide? A. Take the medication at bedtime. B. Take the medication in the morning with breakfast. C. Lie down for 30 minutes after taking the medication. D. Take the medication with a full glass of water after rising in the morning. The correct answer is D. Take the medication with a full glass of water after rising in the morning. Rationale. Precautions need to be taken with the administration of alandronate to prevent gastrointestinal adverse effects and to increase absorption of the medication. The medication needs to be taken with a full glass of water after rising in the morning. The client should not eat or drink anything for 30 minutes following administration and should not lie down after taking the medication. The nurse is preparing discharge instructions for a client receiving baclofen. Which instruction should be included in the teaching plan? A. Restrict fluid intake. B. Avoid the use of alcohol. C. Stop the medication if diarrhea occurs. D. Notify the health care provider if fatigue occurs. The correct answer is B. Avoid the use of alcohol. Rationale, baclofen is a skeletal muscle relaxant. The client should be cautioned against the use of alcohol and other central nervous system depressants because baclofen potentiates the depressant activity of these agents. Constipation rather than diarrhea is a side effect. Restriction of fluids is not necessary, but the client should be warned that urinary retention can occur. Fatigue is related to a central nervous system effect that is most intense during the early phase of therapy and diminishes with continued medication use. The client does not need to notify the HCP about fatigue. The nurse is analyzing the laboratory studies on a client receiving dantrolene. Which laboratory test would identify an adverse effect associated with the administration of this medication? A. Platelet count. B. Creatinine level. C. Liver function tests. D. Blood urea nitrogen level. The correct answer is C. Liver function tests. Rationale, dose-related liver damage is the most serious adverse effect of dantrolene. To reduce the risk of liver damage, liver function tests should be performed before treatment and throughout the treatment interval. Dantrolene is administered at the lowest effective dosage, 
for the shortest time necessary. Cyclobenzaprine is prescribed for a client for muscle spasms, and the nurse is reviewing the client's record. Which disorder, if noted in the record, would indicate a need to contact the health care provider about the administration of this medication? A. Glaucoma B. Emphysema C. Hypothyroidism D. Diabetes mellitus The correct answer is A. Glaucoma Rationale, because cyclobenzaprine has anticholinergic effects, it should be used with caution in clients, with a history of urinary retention, glaucoma, and increased intraocular pressure. Cyclobenzaprine should be used only for a short time. In monitoring a client's response to disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, which assessment findings, would the nurse consider acceptable responses? Select all that apply. A. Control of symptoms during periods of emotional stress. B. Normal white blood cell, platelet, and neutrophil counts. C. Radiological findings that show no progression of joint degeneration. D. An increased range of motion in the affected joints, three months into therapy. E. Inflammation and irritation at the injection site, three days after the injection is given. The correct answers are a control of symptoms during periods of emotional stress b normal white blood cell platelet and neutrophil counts c radiological findings that show no progression of joint degeneration and d an increased range of motion in the affected joints three months into therapy rationale because emotional stress frequently exacerbates the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis the absence of symptoms is a positive finding disease modifying anti-rheumatic drugs are given to slow the progression of joint degeneration. In addition, an improvement in the range of motion after three months of therapy with normal blood work is a positive finding. Temperature elevation and inflammation and irritation at the medication injection site could indicate signs of infection. That's all I have for this video. Please like, share, let me know if you have any questions. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.